the NAFTA podcast. Sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. NAFTA podcast, we're back. It's uh, match week one in the books, folks. Match week one in the books. You got myself, you got Michael, you got Dylan. Nick is in the middle of a six-hour drive to Martha's Vineyard, Dylan said. Um, We joked to call him. No shot I'd be able to figure that out and put that onto the pod. Just no shot at all, so that's a a miss. Uh, But unfortunately, we're going to miss Nick on a pod episode where there's a little controversy, which we'll get to in a second. Michael, how you feeling? I'll ask Dylan in a second, but how you feeling? First first week in the books, what was it like having having games back? Um, it was great. I I had to work Saturday, unfortunately, so I got, I missed watching you know the full slate. Uh, but the games I got to watch were fun. Um, we need a center defensive mid really bad. Uh, that's, I'm sure I, that's all I'll say right now. <laughs> I'm sure you'll get into that too, Dylan. Uh, we're literally potting maybe an hour after final whistle for United Wolves. So I have to imagine, I, you know, feeling not the best. There's, there's a lot of raw of emotion going through right now. Um, I'll save it for when we actually get to that part. I'm, there's a lot of adrenaline going through my body. I'm kind of upset, but um, I, I don't know. It was probably one of the best one nothing defeats I've ever seen. So, um, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll take it as they come. Love it. Um, I've been doing these preview pods, as you guys know. The first one came out uh, today. We're obviously recording Monday, coming out Tuesday, so it was yesterday. We got a couple more coming up. There's a Palace one. There's a Bournemouth one that Michael joined me on. Dylan helped me out with the Wolves one. Uh, and then I also did a Newcastle one today as well. All of them very, very good. Uh, definitely, even if you're not a fan, take a listen. Um, those people have forgotten more about those teams than any of us know. I guess minus, you know, Dylan, you know a lot about Wolves. You're, you're our expert, so I'll give you that credit. Um, but it made me think, because I've talked to them about watching games, and obviously a few of those podcasts are based in the UK, so they don't necessarily have the ritual that we have early mornings and whatnot. Michael, start us off here. What is the normal routine for you when you watch the the early morning games like not going to a bar do you, do you get coffee do you actually make breakfast what do you normally do uh i don't make breakfast that's not happening um <laughs> it it depends if it is a so if it's like us playing the 7 30 game i'll go i'll get up go get coffee and like go downstairs for that for that 7 30 game if it's like anybody else pretty much i'm watching it in bed I'm, I'm maybe getting like some water i'm not leaving the house to to get prepared or anything and then after that it's usually one on the at 10 the one at the tv one on the computer uh and then the 12 31 it's saturday so if i'm if i'm doing something especially during like football season here i might not be might be going somewhere to like watch ohio state or whatever but if i'm sticking around that Twelve thirty one just on TV. I'm I'm kind of just chilling, watching all those games. Dylan, are you are you chefing up for for morning morning football, morning soccer? I mean, if you truly want it, it's the damn. I can't believe I'm going to miss the seven thirty game because I'm totally going to sleep in until nine. Then I wake up at six o'clock and then just sit in my bed watching Rebecca Lowe until we end up getting the game to happen. Um, but no, it's it's bagels from Wonder Bagels in Jersey City delivered and then now with the new space um it's setting up the outdoor tv um yeah. which got some run in week one and sitting out there in the nice summer weather watching some footy with the neighbors it, until about three yeah this the reason for this question was because on social media i saw that you got some preseason football in out on the deck so i wanted to i wanted to know how the trial run went and if there's any adjustments going into match week two um Apparently, when I move the TV a little bit further away, it loses uh, some of the Wi-Fi. So, um, me and uh, my brother-in-law were watching the Chelsea-Liverpool game and may have put some money on Mo Salah to score. And it freeze-framed right as he got the ball one-on-one. 
and it was stuck there for like two minutes and we saw it go in and then that's when it was oh it's off sides it was devastating which then also led to some cursing with ironically enough like a five-year-old that we didn't realize was because like there's a yard that people can play in publicly wearing a Bobby Firmino jersey watching the game <laughs> because literally he was like, oh, there's a TV with the game on. I'm just going to watch this instead of actually playing. Um, but no, the setup was fantastic. So I highly recommend getting you boys over at some point. Yeah, I know that Alexis uh, told me that we were invited after the fact. And I was like, damn, I wish we were, weren't were in Ohio or wherever we were. we were in Annapolis this weekend. So I didn't even get to watch that much either for uh my buddy Brendan's baby shower. Shout out to uh, Vivian James, VJ. Uh, we were singing that all weekend. Um, but amazing to have football back. Amazing to have soccer back. I unfortunately had really terrible watching scenarios. So a lot of these games I had to catch replays. I had to catch highlights when I could. But let's roll through. I think I'm going to talk seven games in our, in our turn and burn section. First one being Burnley nil and Man City 3. Uh, company doesn't make an impact uh, on his return against his team. That's at Burnley. Holland with the first two goals of the season, and Rodri gets one in the 75th. Arsenal win 2-1 against Forrest at home. Uh, they keep the roll going from last season, and Ketia scores with Saka as well, and Awuni gets a goal for Forrest. I think he is going to be an interesting fantasy pickup here uh, throughout the season. A 1-1 draw between Bournemouth and West Ham with uh, Jared Bowen getting the goal for West Ham and Dom Solanke getting the goal for uh, Bournemouth. Brighton, they welcome Luton Town to the Premier League with a 4-1 battering. Uh, it was Solly March, it was Jao Pedro, it was Edingra, uh, and then it was Duncan Ferguson in some stoppage time. Morris with the pen goal for, for Luton Town. <coughs> Everton Fulham. Fulham win 1-0. Bobby de Cordova reed in the 73rd minute. Uh, and then Sheffield United and Palace. Palace get all three points with Edward with the goal in the 49th. A 1-0 win there. Uh, and then a entertaining 2-2 draw between Tottenham Hotspur and Brentford. Uh, Romero with the goal in the 11th minute. It is equalized by Mbwemo's penalty in the 26th. John Wissa uh, gets the lead for Brentford in the 36th. And then Michael's best friend before halftime, Emerson Royale, uh, with a goal to see that one draw. Guys, any notes for the lower seven, I don't know what, what we're going to call these games. The fly-through games is what we called them last year. But the games we're not going to spend as much time on. Any thoughts, anything that you were shocked by, anything you want to chat about? Um, I'll start. Uh, Arsenal, very lucky to not have drawn this game. Uh, Brendan Johnson, early chance at no no would have been huge. Uh, Nottingham Forest, I think, are... I think I said in the chat they're gonna. I think they're gonna be fine this year. Um, Bournemouth. I think they're still trying to figure out that pressing style right now, mm-hmm. but they they look good towards like the end of that game, like the the middle of the second half to the end. Obviously, that's when they got their goal. Um, Brighton looked unreal for the most part. They are playing what we have considered like one of the two worst teams in the league. But then, uh, you know, Fulham, Everton. Don't know really what to make of that one. And then Palace, again, I guess I gave Sheffield United on opening day a little bit too much credit. Palace kind of dispatched them easily. Yeah, Michael, with thoughts on just about every game. Dylan, what about yourself? <laughs> um, well, I can tell them what to think about. With I was with Hank, so Everton and Fulham. Fulham's bad. Like, I, if there's one thing, I, I'm going to get into it, but like, there's one thing I took away from the whole week was that the teams that I thought are bad are bad and there's eight of them and I think Everton just proved that either DLC needs to be the striker that he was to start the year a couple years ago or they need to go get one in the next two weeks because that is all they were missing in terms of just missing sitter after sitter where they should have at least won that game 3-1 in my opinion um i'm not saying fulham can't 
figure it out because now that they have the Adama um, role trajectory going on, I could see something special happening there. Um, but I, I'm just throwing it out there. Like Fulham should have lost that game, and it's unfortunate yeah. that Everton kind of had. That's kind of one of my main takeaways. Yeah, that the other one. That, oh. No, I was gonna say that. I was gonna agree with you. I think that I didn't. I didn't touch on it when I said the score, but Everton probably should have won that. It, it was kind of wild, Michael. And let it let it just be known though. Pereira Mitrovic had, came off the bench that game. I uh, only played about half an hour, and then Polina is still out. That's literally their three best players. I think for sure Everton should have won this game, um, but that's what it's when you play Dutch ball. You're gonna have to take your chances when you get them, and if you don't, then you're gonna lose. Uh, I think Fulham will be fine. I think they're gonna look a little bit iffy until they get that solidified starting eleven and get Polina back. I think that's fair. Um, I'd like to say Everton. As much as it was Deitch ball, like it wasn't like they had two opportunities. Like they could have, should have scored three goals. It just, um, I'm about, uh, I'm about to say Mbappe. My bad. Um, Can you imagine? I know, right? He's on Everton. Hank would be <laughs> so happy. Um, Mbappe might, st- might just, still go down. Yeah, probably. But Mbappe just isn't it. Like he, no. he should have put away at least two out of the three chances that he had. So, um, I mean, I'm not one to it's like calling the kettle black with me talking about scoring goals, but like it's just something that needs to happen. Um, Mo Mope is like a year without a goal, right? Yeah, something like he that. hasn't scored in, in. Yeah, that's tough. That's tough. Uh, go ahead, keep going, keep going. My my only other big thought is, I actually think Spurs are going to be fun to watch after was- everything. I was going to open up with this one, too. It's the only other game that I was like, what, what do we know about these two teams after a 2-2? Um, what did you see in Spurs that you're like, I think they're actually going to be decent? It kind of, not to get into, like, the preview for next week, but, like, I think Spurs, like, how they played, could give United trouble next week because they actually have people who can put the ball in the back of the net. However, their back line is still atrocious, and they need to work into that. But, like, if I was a Spurs fan with where they're at, I'd be encouraged that they could still maybe finish top 10 without Harry Kane with what I saw, um, or at least from that game. And then I thought Brentford... I thought Brentford played actually very well, all things considered, up top with showing that they can still get goals without having um, Tony. So I, I think I think Brentford's probably the happier of the two sides with the tie there but i don't think michael agrees with that but like i i don't know i'd be encouraged from both sides even though it wasn't the most perfect game um spurs i think though i think madison is a a really good addition probably better than i had thought he would be obviously he Mm -hmm. got two assists like that's huge um, but I think also just he's uh, allowed to do a little bit more than he was at Leicester, obviously. Um, and I think Brentford, I think there was like a stat of like how many minutes Wissa played last year and in, in his goals. Cause if you look at like how many games he played in, it doesn't look very impressive, but he didn't start a lot of those games. He came off the bench and scored. So I think he's going to be like a, Big time player for them. I think they're both teams are going to be fine. Obviously, I don't. I think they'll both take a little bit of a step back. Obviously, losing you know their striker each respectively. But um, I agree. I think Spurs next week with United will be like a very good game. Very hard to pick, but you know we'll see. I like Ange Postacoglu a lot. I think he's just going to try to score goals, which I think will be fun. Yeah, um, I was going to say this about uh brentford and then i forgot that they're also playing spurs who who just lost harry kane and i'm not going to give any credit to richarlison but is wissa and Embuemo one of those scenarios where you're playing fantasy american football and the running back goes down and you're just like this guy's going to get carries now so now we got to pick him up like with with our fantasy league I, I think they already got drafted but like that should be a mindset right like in Buemo and and wissa are going to probably Get four to six goals. I don't know. Right, Wiss is, four, on, my, Wiss is I, on my team. So four to six goals, like in what the year? Yeah. I hope not. I oh my god, there were more than that. <laughs> but by the time when when does Tony get back in? Like He's out for the whole two. year. 
Yeah, dude, they're, they're going to have to share. So that's like probably 10 goals between the two of them. They're going to get more than that. You think so? <laughs> they're gonna, yeah, yeah, they're going to get like like close to double digits. All right, man, you know. I was being conservative. Yeah. I think Wissa, what? Wissa had like four and seven, and he, he played like essentially like 13 games. Yeah. Well, you know, I was just, I was just being conservative. Plus, being, I, think, being... I think there's something about, too, like, I think Brighton have a lot of talent. I know I'm not, we weren't just talking about them, but Brighton have like a lot of talent, but they also know what they want to do. I think yeah. Brentford are like, everybody on that team knows exactly knows. what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. They're, oh. they're going to be fine. They're going to be a machine, essentially. Well, I'll never be Neocon John. It's totally fine. Michael, speaking of Brighton, yeah. you, had, you had a little scenario there with VAR. I think it's only right that if we're going to totally trash the officials in our first Dude. pod back after a season, you, you get going on VAR, because I know that the Chelsea-Liverpool and the Man United-Wolves game that we're going to talk about in a minute has a little VAR scenario too. So you, you said you're coming in hot with a rant. I might as well just clear the lane for you. So, I, I mean, we can – I guess I can just talk about all, all the decisions. I, I hate – I hate, I hate, and good thing Nick isn't on this pod because what I'm going to say right now would have annoyed him and we would have been on a tangent. I hate that I'm going to go back to our, our conversation with Alexi Lalas here. There, I don't give a fuck. I don't get, sorry, mom, again. I don't care what we have to do to make it at least somewhat consistent. I don't understand how Lewis Dunk gets a penalty called on him in, in that game. And maybe it's because we felt bad for Luton and we wanted them to get a goal. I don't know. I have no clue. How that was a penalty, how I, I think it was Nicholas Jackson in the Liverpool game, mm-hmm. essentially com- completely misplays the ball. It wasn't even a situation where, you know, the arm was so super far away from him or anything like that. He just, he thought he was going to jump and head it. He didn't. It hit off his hand, like extended from his body. It it look it just one of those things you look at it and you're like that's a penalty like i don't know how else to describe it and i could almost get over both of those two things and essentially by sunday like mid sunday i was like okay i get it it's not a penalty whatever like there are a lot of other situations in that game that annoyed me more or less or whatever the the onana today i i mean you just gave license for goalies to essentially assault people Whenever they want. Assault, it, brother. Assault. And I'm I don't give a fuck what Tim Howard says. I don't he's they said he sat there and once it happened he said it, it never gets called. It's not gonna get called. I don't care. Like we have to have some form of consistency with handballs and we have to sit there and look when somebody gets bludgeoned in the box. We have to be able to go, that's a foul, that's a penalty. I don't it doesn't matter if it's the goalie. I, I'm a big protect the goalie person, but like, holy shit, he the, he is, he didn't even try to go for the ball. The, he didn't even try. That's targeting in the NFL. It is. <laughs> like, it literally would have targeting in the NFL. <laughs> he, he, Onana literally jumped in the air thinking he was going to punch the ball, realized he was nowhere near the ball. He made a poor decision off, off the jump right there, jumping for that ball. It was a bad goalie decision to jump for that ball. And instead of pulling out, and saying, oh shit, I'm not going to get the ball, let me go defend my box, he just swung his arms into two guys as hard as he possibly could. It's a, it's a penalty. I don't, I don't understand if we're going to sit here and go, it never gets called. I don't give a fuck. It's wrong. It's been wrong every single time then in the past. You've made a wrong decision every time it doesn't get called. If, that's, if you're sitting there going, that's not a penalty, you made a wrong decision every time. That's a penalty every single fucking time. I know you clearly didn't watch this game based off of what we talked about before, but Everton got a goal disallowed. Um, I, I heard for, it was bad. It was almost the exact same thing of um, the goalkeeper jumps up and grabs the ball, and the uh, Everton player is just standing there, like, minding his own business. The goalie runs into him to knock the ball off of his head and lose it to then allow Everton to score, and that was disallowed. Also, like it's it's the same thing where there needs to be accountability on the goaltenders to be athletes. No offense. Yeah, but like I, to I, like be able no, to be I an did. athlete and not like have to control your body as well and not be given like 
the full like quarterback treatment of now all of a sudden like you can't touch him or do anything. There, and, like, there is that call. And just to come off your end, I'll let you get back on it. Going back to the Wolves game, if that game isn't in Old Trafford, I would think that gets called. But I'm just gonna do some big six, six conspiracy theory and put my tinfoil hat on and say that on Monday Night Football to start the year, they don't want United going down, so there's some type of title race. And at this point, I don't want to call in relegation because from what I saw today, I don't think we are. But if we get relegated by one point, it's because of that, and it's gonna piss me the hell off. It's it is especially for you because obviously Nick is a United fan. That that call is so like. It's so egregious because they're they're they always want to talk about like the goalies have the ball in their hand and gets kicked out or whatever or like if the if he runs into somebody and drops the ball like that person forced him to drop the ball like yeah I I hate that we as as the stat guy on this podcast the guy who sits there and like looks at goals assists and xg and shit like that more than probably anybody here we have to be able to use our eyes too like we have to understand when like. There is a situation where the goalkeeper catches the ball, comes down on someone's head, and the guy had nothing to do with it. He was just standing there, and he drops it, and a guy jumping out in uh, decapitating two players, and we go, this one's a foul, that one's not a foul. And Kalajic is coming off of two torn ACLs. He should be in the witness protection program. Like, it's, it's some bullshit. United doesn't need these three points to go finish in third or fourth this year. Like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's it also and and I'll let John move on with this because I this is longer than I thought my rant would even be, but I I do think there is I don't know I'd have to like really scrape through the history here I do think there is a little bit of a well it's like United or it's Liverpool or it's a City and this is Wolves and we don't really care like how this this goes. And the clear, also the clear and obvious shit is is what they were saying. Like, has to be clear and obvious. I don't, I don't know what clear and obvious means then, because again, he he murdered him, straight up in in the six yard box. He just got murdered. Two people, double homicide. So, uh, if you if you've missed it, definitely go back and and take a look at the end of the the Wolves Man United game. I totally agree. Like, how are we? How many years have we had VAR now? It's. <laughs> Too many. However many years it is, that many years too many. It's just, it's, I feel like at some point, I don't know if it's at some point, like, you gotta think you're getting better at something, they're just getting worse. They're getting worse. But, you you referenced at least two of the games. Here's the three we're gonna spend more time on. We can go one by one. Uh, Michael, you split points with Chelsea. Uh, Diaz had a goal in the 18th minute. You guys had a couple goals roll, or, or the the solid goal was rolled out, rolled out in the 29th. Um, Axel Diaz, is that how you say it? How do you say his last name? You know? I think it's D- I have, I have to look at it. I think it's Diasi. Diasi. Uh, he got the goal in the 37th minute for for Chelsea. Uh, they got a Chilwell Dis- goal. Diasi. Diasi. Chilwell goal rolled out in the 39th minute. That one ends 1-1. I should have seen that coming. I picked Liverpool and they've tied. The last what twenty five meetings or whatever the fuck seven. This is the seventh in a row. Um, we wanted to talk Newcastle Villa mainly for the fact all of us were big gasser uppers of the Aston Villa and man Newcastle United five one. Tenali uh, opened his book early in the sixth minute. Isak uh, scored in the sixteenth um, and fifty eighth. Callum Wilson in the seventy seventh. Harvey Barnes welcome to Newcastle. Uh, in the 90th, and then Diaby was the only one with a goal for Villa. And then, as you uh, people have probably realized, United got all three points against Wolves. Uh, Varan with the goal in the 76th minute. Not without controversy, though. Um, Michael, let's start with you. Just Or, or let's, let's do Newcastle-Villa first, because we could probably fly through that one. Um, Scale of 1 to 10, Dylan, how shocked are you about this uh, scoreline? Because we saw both these teams play. I know it's preseason, but we were convinced Villa was the best team. To quote a real uh, famous football coach, was Villa really who we thought they were? (laughs) Um, Like... I thought when I when that game started off, I was like, "Great, we're about to have fireworks. We're about to see another three three game. Like this is perfect." And then, I 
I think we've like kind of talked about it or touched on it. Newcastle did the right thing and has added depth, but it was like, is it like star power depth or just more like, hey, they can stick around where they were? I don't know. I I think it's something between that and Eddie Howe where like I think that just played more of a factor where they're able to gel and just came out and rode the wave of being at home and just it's, obliterated that game. I was, gonna, I was gonna say it's at home too. I mean, we talked about it last pod. I just did the Newcastle pod with uh, my guy Stephen Ord at the uh, True Faith podcast. It's it is truly, 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 truly the hard knocks effect again. He was telling me all kinds of things, and I was like, "Damn, oh, man." He said Newcastle's going to finish second this year, or third, I think he said. And I was like, I, I buy it. But I do like the addition of, like, Harvey Barnes. And then there's a little bit of an unknown factor with Livermento just because he was injured and whatnot. But from what people have seen when he's played, he's a really solid player. And... My guy Steven, as I as I was just saying, doing the pod within the day, he told me that Alexander Isaac's the second best striker in the league. And and he believes that. So played that, pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Two goals. Yeah. Um that's always been like like they've had Callum Wilson who's been like great, but they've also been like, you know, middling the whole time and like even fighting for relegation at certain points. Um so it kind of sucks that he can't kind of be the guy when they're going to be really good. Cause mm-hmm. I think he, I think he can be a really good striker, obviously. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, Isaac is, is crazy. Um, I think if, if I'm being honest, I picked Newcastle to win this mainly because they're at home. Um, and I was thinking like a three, one win just because I know both these teams are going to be kind of open. I know there's going to be goals. Ming's going down. He's like out for a long time. Good thing they brought in Pal Torres. They got Carlos. Um, they still have Consa there. I think. Mm. I think how they were setting up preseason and how we had seen them play. I think Buendia is going to be a big loss for them. Yeah. I think he was kind of like that centerpiece um, in the midfield for them, where then Kamara and Luis could kind of sit back. Obviously, they have Tielemans they brought in. That's going to be good. They're getting. Zaniolo, I think from Roma, which which will be nice. Um, I think they'll figure it out. I think uh, Emery is obviously a very very good coach, but I mean I didn't see them losing five one. But I also think I think we we could tell by last year like if Newcastle catches fire, they're pretty tough to beat regardless of who you are. Yeah, this is the thing I'll say: the injuries are going to kill them. I think that I don't, you know, we have done this podcast now. This is going on our fourth year. I don't think any of us are truly fans of second teams but I think we've known a lot of these teams for a long time now and it's like I want to see a team at full strength play I don't want injuries for anyone like I I like when Villa is decent and good my hope is that with these injuries they can survive some of these early games I really hope that my guy Wes Edens is smart enough not to fire Unai if they start going down a bad path early I don't think that's going to happen because I do think the longer he can stay there, the better that team's going to become. You'll get people, Buendia, you'll get him back. Um, and I think that they are a tough team and they got a lot of talent. So I'm right there with you. I think the injuries are going to kill them. And I think we need to start, and we did a little bit last year, and I know Dylan was riding them betting-wise last year too because Vegas didn't figure it out. But I, I do think that we need to start thinking about the St. James effect the same way that we'll probably think of the Anfield effect at times, for sure. Um, Speaking of Anfield, Michael, 1-1. Need a CDM. Uh, Yes, we desperately need a CDM. I thought uh, Luis Diaz was great. I thought um, Jota was, was fine at times up there, I think actually for that game, how we were kind of getting like pressed a little bit, Darwin would have probably been a better pick just to get in behind a little bit more. Mo was fine. Um, he obviously like almost had a goal and an assist. Um, but Sabasly, I know I'm just like literally naming people at this point, but Sabasly <laughs> was, was unbelievable. Played the whole 90 minutes, did a ton of backtracking. McAllister, same, same for him. Uh, Gakpo, I, he just doesn't, he can't play, uh, that position 
I guess, without somebody like anchoring behind him. Um, and I think those two guys are kind of just workhorses in that the way that we set up. And I think they need to be able to push forward and have somebody as that anchor. Hence why we need a CDM. But I mean, we're going to get scored on like for sure. Uh, so I'm not, I wasn't surprised by that. I just wish we would have went for it a little bit more. I guess Chelsea were a little bit better than I thought they would be. Um, but I guess when you're walking away from your first away, the first game of the year away at Chelsea with a point, you can't be, you can't be too angry. Um, so we just have to, the next one has to be a win. New, new Chelsea, same, just the same. Uh, I totally screwed that up. New Chelsea, same as the old Chelsea, a defender scores. Uh, Dylan, what were your impressions uh, on this Chelsea team? Please, please tell me I can still hate on them. I mean, you can have still hate on them. I will say this. If that Chelsea performance is indicative of what we're going to get throughout the year, I think it's a different Chelsea team than we saw last year. Like, if they're able to, con- in terms of this, if they're able to control the ball how they did and can actually, fig- like, get some more, like, finish. Oh, my chair almost broke there. That would have been tough. Um, <laughs> even, my chair is, even my chair is pissed that I made this comment. Um, it. <laughs> If they can control the ball as they did and be able to get over 60% possession, especially when they're playing a lot of the better teams in the Premier League, and they follow that up with, with some good finishing, like, do you not want to say you're a good team, Michael? Is that why you're No, up? no, no, no. I just, I have just a point after you're, you're done, just just for that. Um, but I, I don't know. I thought they controlled the game, and ultimately the point I'm trying to make that I've probably butchered over the last minute and a half of everyone listening to this is that they were better than I anticipated them being and now that they're about to get two more not to rub salt and two um, a wound here uh, reinforcements in the midfield I think that like it, ultimately it's going to end up gelling and working out for them where they're going to end up being a threat I don't know if they will be top four or not but they'll be definitely very competitive yeah I mean real quick Michael before you go more <laughs> money spent today by a Pochettino team than he ever got spent while he was at Tottenham. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so I, I will just say, if you look at those those top teams and their midfields, so we'll say City, you obviously have Rodri, De Bruyne, uh, Kovacic, Foden sometimes plays in there, um, Newcastle, uh, even like Villa without Buendia, they still got Kamara, Thielmans, Douglas Luiz. Uh, we essentially had no midfield. We had two guys. That were working in there. So I, I think we it I don't know if this was obviously a plan, but what ended up happening, if you probably look at the heat map, which I have not, they had complete control of the middle of the field. Uh once they got into the game into that second half, I think that will not be the case for when they played like the teams with solid midfields. Um I think we basically tried to we tried to play the game around that we tried to get the ball to Salah, we tried to get the ball to Douglas Louise. Salbasai was constantly behind in that like right back position. Uh same with McAllister on the other end. And sometimes we were we were in the midfield on a counter, but we we didn't really have the ball and I don't think it was necessarily because like they played us our midfield out of the park. I think it was just a, an overall more player more of their players in the midfield where they that's where they wanted to control the game and that's what they did. I agree with that. I think that's why I said if they can play this way throughout the year. That yeah, I don't think they can though. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> I think fair. if they play, I think if they play adequate competition, like adequate numbers, like three to three or or whatever, with teams that are actually solid. I don't think they're going to be able to do that. Yeah, I will say hey. from a Liverpool side, you guys played a lot better than I thought you would at the back. If you want compliments, I don't know if I do, but <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it either way. Um, definitely a, a different looking Chelsea midfield. I will say it, I, I felt like last year that was a big, obviously Achilles. So they weren't a very good team last year and being able to just cut them up in the middle of the pitch and having the space between their back line and their front line was a huge, uh, worry. If you're a Chelsea fan, for sure. I think Enzo Fernandez played really well in this one. Mm-hmm. Um, Dylan, I will say this before and, and, and people have gotten your thoughts on, uh, the controversial call at the goalie at the end. I have breaking news. Yeah. Um, the professional game match officials limited 
has come out and apologized to Gary O'Neill and the Wolf, saying it should have been a penalty. Oh, sorry. Great, but what does that help? <laughs> Some bullshit. <Yeah. laughs> Thanks. Thanks a lot. That you is give a, us our uh, point back? That, that's a bit of a Seinfeld episode in itself, <laughs> kind of right there. Wait, hold on. Like, they didn't even <laughs> wait a day. They waited an hour, and it said, oh, right, we got it wrong. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's correct this right away. Um, man, that sucks. I will say this. I got to see a little bit of this game. I was potting during it, but I got to see a little bit at the end. And statistically, I got to give it to you, Dill. 23 total shots. When's the last time a Wolf's team had 23 total shots and the 10, 15 minutes I saw, a little, a little turn and, and pop from Fabio Silva looked pretty good. I'm showing 18 shots, but I appreciate the five phantom ones you're giving us. <laughs> hey, hey Fat Mob's got 23, and they got one big chance, yes, but 23 shots. You got to put pucks on that. Your XG was 2.27. Well, yeah, because we should have scored a million times, but that's, you know, them the breaks. Um, <laughs> I'll be positive here. I'll get. I got all the ref suck tinfoil hat. Um, yeah. the league doesn't want to see us win, even especially because they knew the stat of the last time a team um was in last place in Christmas. It was Leicester, and then they won the league the next year, so they just don't want a repeat of that. So I get it. Don't want us to start off hot. Um, I think I said this was the best one nothing defeat I've ever saw because it wasn't a sit back, and I thought. I hope this is what things to come. I think Gary O'Neill actually had the right tactics today in terms of, and if this is what we're truly going to do, like we were playing press football, but the right amount of press of not leaving ourselves too open. And this was a team that I know this episode's coming out later in the week, but like John, your part of this conversation, like they clearly took the, no one thinks we're good. We're going to play for each other at least tonight, I hope that that can, they don't exhaust themselves and that goes on throughout the year. Um, Because Matthias Nunez, that was the Matthias Nunez I thought we were getting last year. Like, absolutely ripping it up. And between him and Cunha, they both just bodied United all over the place of controlling the ball and then just completely controlling the turn and then going about 50, 60 meters down the pitch. And mm-hmm. unfortunately, they were tied themselves out and they couldn't score because, you know, no one else was down there with them. But, well, that's, that's <laughs> the other part. But, like, between that, Jao Gomez is who I thought he was. Like, completely, like, he had a few mistakes, which I think is him just getting his feet wet still in the Premier League. But he was playing the perfect, like, defensive midfielder of fighting back, winning back balls. Cunha was doing it. At Nori was doing what I was hoping he would do of pushing forward. Like, Neto is still... I think there's so much more to him. And then the only mistake I would say is Fabio Silva needs to play more in terms of playing with Cunha because when he came in at the end, he missed three chances of a game blocked, but he was in the, actually in the right spot where a striker should be to then put in a garbage goal. And I think against a team that's not United or some of the lesser teams, there's goals that come out of that. So, like, in all positives, everything outside of the six-yard box – the Wolves were fantastic, and if we can get that the rest of the year and then maybe put it together, like, I think our midfield is so much better than people realize, and I will leave you with this. As long as no one gets injured, we'll be fine. Our, I'm going to ask a, a, a bit of a deeper cut question just because I'm familiar with this guy because he played at Sevilla. Um, should we be paying attention to the waning and waxing of Pablo Sarabia's minutes as compared to Fabio Silva's in your mind then? Yes, I think, like, Sarabia didn't play terrible, but, like, Fabio Silva should be coming in, yes. Um, I, he compared, I've seen him play a lot worse, Michael. So like, he, <laughs> It's not necessarily a good thing. I'm just saying, like, yeah. Fabio Silva should start over him. Also, I forgot to shout out, Nelson Semedo played fantastic, too, and had Canacho in his pocket for most of that game as well. Um, so, from a Wolf side, and Nick sent me a lot of his takes, too, but at least talking from a Wolf standpoint... It sucks because I think we at least deserve the point. If not, it should have been 2 1 in terms of us actually converting and the fact that we should have gotten a penalty to get the point. But we have a tough road ahead in terms of like Brighton next week. But it, it's encouraging to make me think at home we could maybe at least pull out a point in that game. So 
I'm happy with it. Hopefully some people think we aren't going to get relegated now. For sure. Um, any, any key takeaways from Nick? I don't need you to write. He's long-winded, as we all know. But if there's any key things, go ahead. He, said the, Wolves are, he said the Wolves were good and affected United's play. That's the other thing, too. I'm telling myself United is good, so that way I think the Wolves are good from what I saw, and not that Wolf. I mean, United didn't play the best game, but, like, in terms of that. But I think we affected them not playing well. Um, he has a new Tony he hates, if you can guess who that is. Anthony. Uh, yep, he officially yeah. hates him. Um, he's not wrong in this. Rashford shouldn't be striker and playing number nine. He has to be outside, which I think ultimately is what they'd like to do. They just have some injuries, and that's why they're not there. Um, one game in, he already hates Mason Mount. Mount's terrible. Um, Casemiro's old, and the midfield's brutal and wasteful. That is that is <laughs> Nick there. Um, and then he finally said, we just need to score, but the Wolves will stay up. So that was very nice of him being encouraging. But I do want you to run back the tape, by the way, because last week I said we would lose one nothing because they would score within the 70th and 80th minute. True. Just throw very that true. there. That, that's, that's absolutely right. Uh, it, correct me if I'm wrong, Michael, because I feel like based on your reaction, you may have some of this knowledge too. Wasn't there... Wasn't there like a, a dark horse campaign going on within the podcast by Nick that Casemiro was low key the signing of the year? Yeah. Yeah, and and what what's the the time between the end of last year and the beginning of this year? It's like 65 days or 75 days or something. So in that time he's actually just aged, you know, so far forward that he's now terrible. He's like he's like reverse Benjamin Button times 3. So he's just a normal person. He's a, he's a normal person. Time. Yeah, because yeah, uh, I I was willing. To, I mean, it's obviously one weekend where we're the podcast that at one point said Southampton was going to win the league, and look where they are now. Um, was wrong about Madison. I think I'm absolutely dead on about Mason Mount. I think yeah. unless he can, f- they can figure out kind of like what his best position is. I don't think this the way that they set up kind of. Uh, allows him to play that position very well and again if Casemiro is old and and can't do that job then he definitely can't play that position because you're gonna need a double pivot um I think Rashford probably is a a left-sided player uh which is gonna suck for Garnacho because I think he is um kind of one of those bright spots for you I actually thought when he came out and Sancho came in I thought Sancho was really good uh which I know a lot of people are down on him I think Anthony is Pretty average. Uh, Juan Basaka actually got the assist. He's a good defensive guy. I don't think he knows what he's doing on the offensive end, but it turned out and worked out well that time. And then I think Bruno Fernandez, you, you take the good with the bad with him. I think the good is obviously very good, but the bad could sometimes be pretty horrible. And I agree with Dylan. I think Cunha was outrageously good. I think Fabio Silva was good when he came in. I like Lamina a lot. Um, in that like center mid position, uh, I like his like work rate. Uh, Mateus Nunes, obviously, even last year, I think he was probably one of your best, if not your best player. Um, and then yeah, Neto, I think you're gonna get half the games out of him, but for those half of the games, he's gonna be halfway decent. So I think you guys will be fine. Um, I'm still looking at more than more than three teams that are worse than you. I agree. Yeah. It's just depth. I'm worried we're gonna if we play how we played tonight, though, we're gonna beat. The tiredest legs ever at the end of the year if we don't get reinforcements at some point yeah uh, yeah just to, i mean for sure <laughs> just to ask a question that is uh totally like like me trying to have self-preservation here are 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 our um table predictions official once the transfer window is closed yeah. yes we get we have allowed ourselves to the end of the month. relegated if you'd like if that's what you're saying yeah I think that's I'm just but people won't forget. They, 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 they will not. I mean, I'm Bolton. I actually care about Wolves so much more than everyone else that I sacrifice myself as Bolton board material for you all. Put it that way. I think I think I think I, I just galaxy brained my way out of that one. Um, all right, first week done. Let's get some predictions in for week two. Um, it is as Michael said coming on to this pod a week with some. Big games, some big time games early in the season. This is not one of them, though. We're going to start off with Nottingham Forest hosting Sheffield United. Michael, you start us off with who you got in this one. Uh, 
Nottingham Forest at home. I think they played very well against Arsenal. I'm looking at a Morgan Gibbs White goal, perhaps a Brendan Johnson or Iwanee goal. I think this is like a 2 0 win for them. Dylan. I'm going to go with Forrest. I'm basing this off of last year, too. Forrest scores goals at home. So Forrest wins. Yeah. Uh, Fulham Brentford at Fulham at the cottage. Uh, am I nuts for taking a draw here? No. I'm going to take Brentford, I, I'm, though. I'm a little concerned, yeah. You're taking Brentford? I, I think it's a draw. It's at Fulham. Michael, who you got here? Um, I got Brentford. I'm not sure. Uh, I think Mitrovic might play. He, he is still trying to push for the move to Saudi Arabia. Um, I'm not sold on Jimenez. And I'm not sold on Vinicius either in that striker position. I I think Brentford just have better identity. Uh, wait, wait do, do you hear that? You hear that? That's Adama's music. Yeah, we know. Listen, Adama, Adama, amazing FIFA player. Yeah, <laughs> I think the real life doesn't translate necessarily. Um, I just think Brentford have a way better identity, so I'm just gonna go with them. Gotcha. Um, Liverpool, they are hosting Bournemouth. It's at Anfield, obviously. Uh, Michael, I know that you are now very close to our good friends at Up the Cherries in all departments. Are you going to be able to put that aside and, and pick your your guys to win this one? Uh, yeah, because we won 9-0 last year, and our, fr- <laughs> our friend uh, had to remind me of when we lost to them and had made me relive that uh, Nathan Ake winner, so I don't feel as bad picking Liverpool for this one. Dylan? Liverpool before Tyler Adams' reinforcements come in. Yeah, uh, I got Liverpool too. Michael, give me a quick... 10 seconds on your thoughts if you had Tyler Adams. We, we're not going to get him. Bournemouth are going to get him. I know. That's what I was talking about. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Man. I we're going like to We're gonna lose out on every <laughs> single center defensive mid. We are going to cuck ourselves so hard this, this year that um, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Probably nothing I kinda, good. I kind of, uh, I kind of like that um, transfer for for Bournemouth. Uh, I like having an American there with, with Michael B. Um, Luton. Go, go ahead. Uh, this game is postponed. Luton and Burnley postponed. I How don't well? know. I don't is know why. <laughs> just, is the stadium not ready? I, I feel like they would just make them play away or something. How They're going to make them play away. That... Damn. Yeah, you, you made I, this blue on my thing, and I was like, what the hell? I, I mean, that means I was like, stop changing my, my file. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. you, Dylan. What do you? Yeah, but, <laughs> I did hey, it for. Hey, I didn't do it just for fun. I did I it for a reason. <laughs> no, yeah. why would I do that? Uh, I'm a nice well then, guy. This this game's still going on apparently. Uh, Wolves Brighton in Wolverhampton. Dylan, lead us off here. Give us your thoughts. Can can you guys pull out a point? After what I saw today, I think we win. But I'm going to take a tie. Oh, holy shit! That's that's like actual panache. Um, okay, hold on. But so after what you saw today, you think you win, but you don't take into account whatever you saw from Brighton. They played wait, Luton. Wait, wait. Still. Also, also, this is. Do we need to go to therapy? This is a new Dylan. Have you ever seen Dylan say anything that confident about his team? He's he's reverse Mush Dylan. There's I never guess, been yeah. a confident phrase about Wolves on this pod. That's I'm, true. Until, I'm sure you're gonna have another clip to do the curb music but we have a manager who wants to be there who um at least was more competent than the manager who wanted to be there two times ago and um i don't know i believe in the youth after what i saw today so we're yeah. tying give us my point play play the, play the kids i got brighton michael you got Brighton. yeah I, I got brighton and uh it is because uh luton is making ground uh like improvements that's why they they requested the first game of this first home game of the season to be postponed that's why i hate to see it spurs this game is not postponed as well because the the london tottenham stadium is a behemoth they are hosting man united um this is a tough one too i'm going with united because i'm not fully sold on spurs yet but dylan you kind of you kind of sail sailed me on them earlier today sold and no, he's salesing me. He's like it was it was a it was a mid sale. 
Yeah, I'm not the decision maker yet. It's fine. <laughs> I mean, I think this game could go either way because I think Tottenham can actually score on United, but I think, if anything, that United doesn't want to be in the same position they were last year, so I'm yeah. going to take United. But I wouldn't be shocked. Michael? Um, I got a draw because I think Spurs will score on United, and I think Spurs' defense is not very good, and United, even though sometimes they look like they can't score a goal, they will score some goals. I just think it'll be the same amount. Not, not a, I, I don't think anything of what you said could not happen. Like, I think you're, that it's, that's a good, it's a good call. City Newcastle, this is the big one, right? This, I think, probably the biggest game of the week. It's at City, at the Etihad. Um, I mentioned him a couple times on this pod, but my guy Steven um, from the True Faith podcast had to remind me today that Newcastle have not won at the Etihad in like 10 years, which totally means that he's, again, reverse mushing me. Um, but I got City, just because I got to. Michael. Uh, oh, man. I have, I have you guys at home. Because, again, I think your defense... You guys didn't look great against Burnley, but also it's like first game of the year, whatever. Our, our, our best defender, and perceived at some point probably going to be our second best defender, also didn't really play. Right. Um, you also don't have De Bruyne, right? He's going to be out for a little bit. Yeah. So, I still have faith that you guys are going to win this. I think there might be a little bit of a little like on high on your own supply from Newcastle coming into this. It's going to be a real opponent this time. Yep. Um, so I got you guys. Don't disagree. Dylan? I agree. Until you prove me otherwise, I will be taking City in every game. Yeah. <laughs> if we're all going to finish over 500, we got, sometimes you just <laughs> got to make like, you got to stick with a gun until it like starts to actually affect yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> Until it starts backfiring. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Aston Villa, bounce back day against Honks uh, Everton at Villa. I got Villa. I got faith. I got faith in Unai. I think Everton still stinks, even though they played better uh, <clears throat> than Fulham. I think they stink. I got Villa. Dylan, he's your, he's your best friend. So I'll let you go next. I know, and he sent me a text complimenting how good the Wolves were today, too. Um, I'm going to take Villa. Um, I don't think Everton stinks, but I think Villa is better in there at home. Michael? Uh, I got the villains because I have Everton going down, so. So, Michael, uh, Everton stinks. Yeah. Um, West Ham, hosting Chelsea. Uh, Chelsea with uh, more reinforcements showing up for this one. It's at West Ham. Michael, who you got? I got Chelsea. Um, I think by the end of this week, Paqueta is gone. Paquita. Paquita, yeah. Uh, either yeah. way. I think he's gone. I think they're already looking at people to bring in. And I think Chelsea, I mean, Caicedo might play for them next week. And he's, I mean, he's really good. So I think that's going to be obviously a big help. I think they'll win. Yeah. Uh, um, Paquita to Man City by next week. Calvin Phillips to Liverpool the same day. Dylan, who you got? I also have Chelsea. I think i'm i'm buying the kool-aid at the moment all three on the chelsea uh palace at home against arsenal last year this was the opening match it was a great match for palace we thought they were going to do great things didn't really happen 12th that's normal um i got arsenal arsenal's still pretty good i think that's a that's another gun we got until it starts backfiring i'm firing that gun you guys in the yeah correct yes love it love it love it all right dylan Bets went decent uh, for us in the first week. If you don't count the championship, that's what you said. Give us a recap and then give us your new bets for, for this week. Premier League 2-0, championship 0-2. So went 50-50, went um, basically a wash on units. Um, so we'll probably go more Premier League heavy um, and focus what I watch a little bit more until I really dive in, but I promise a championship pick each week, so we will deliver. Um, four again, we just talked about it. United Spurs, both teams to score, no draw, plus 125. Um, the over in this game is 2.5, and, and it's like minus 180, and I'm not in midseason form yet to just start taking over 3.5s just yet, so we're going to do the both teams to score, no draw. 
Um, on top of that, we have a little over under um, parlay for you over two and a half in United and Spurs, parlayed with under two and a half in Forest Sheffield United at plus 174. Um, I'm feeling good about that one, to be completely honest, too. Followed by Forest to win, because I don't think Sheffield United's good, at minus 115. And then finally, um, for all those Ed heads out there, we will go to the championship and we will take Ipswich plus 100 this weekend against Queens Park Rangers because I will keep betting against them. QPR, not very good. Don't tell our buddy James Lawrence Alcott. Um, he knows. Come on, come on the pod, James Lawrence Alcott. That'd be really good. I'm for in our your, comments. I'm in your Discord. I'm in your Discord, I'm in, brother. I'm in your Discord. Um, Dylan, love it. We're only what you said in here down point uh, zero four units. What are we Correct. starting with? Like, like dude, we should have started with like, hey, you get fifty, and then you're like screwed if you lose all fifty. Like punishment. I don't know. Is that stupid? I mean, you can start off with how many units you want. I don't know. I mean, if if I end up going negative 50 units, then yeah, I started with 50 units. Like, that's who it will depend on. True. <laughs> the the yeah, goal is to I'm, be positive. <laughs> sounds sounds like I might cut this out because I sound like a pretty green better. Um, get us out of here with the joke before I say something else stupid. All right, boys. Um, why do goalkeepers spend ages on the computer especially in word (laughs) because i can't stop saving their work cheers After podcast. And sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit.